to setting up. There it went, recording in progress now. A beginner's guide to setting up a basic website content planning. Um, so just a quick thing. Hi, I'm Sarah Snow. I'm a former teacher uh, that come out today. This is kind of a writing exercise today to help you um, get started with confidence on your, you know, either your first website or to help other beginners with whom you may work um, if you have clients. So yeah, I, you will possibly hear some barking in the background or whistling. We have dogs and birds here. Um, I love spicy food, learning languages, studying American Sign Language, Spanish and French. Um, and making lots of websites. <laughs> I'm a training team contributor slash mad scientist sponsored by Automatic today as one of my mad science experiments. Um, it's basically um, to work on content of a website. Um, and we're gonna talk about why that is in just a quick second, but just some quick expectations if you are brand new to this space, of course, stay courteous. The golden rule here is respect yourself and everyone in this room. Um, we are brainstorming together today and a little bit separately. Um, and this only really works with kind, deliberate participation. So definitely try and find your chat box today. Um, and then oftentimes there are no wrong ideas throughout, you know, whatever comes to mind, so long as it is, of course, courteous and respectful. Um, so this is an interactive experiment. We're going to see how it goes together. And this is a recorded space. You are welcome to view this later. Oh, my goodness. I must copy this from one of mine that already had the animations on it. So first off, what kind of website are you hoping to create? Um, I'm, I'm really curious about this always just because it helps us to kind of generate ideas with you, things like that. And this could be if you're a brand new beginner, like, oh, I want to make a website for my business. Like, I don't know, one of my, my friends is starting up like a dance business. Um, or if you work with clients, if there is a website that you're like, okay, like, I think that <laughs> they're going to be wanting this thing. Like, what type of website are you, are you making today? What are we planning for today? Hey, someone is considering taking over a site that already exists and improving it. Oh, that's a great idea. Overhauls are really important. And this is uh, definitely something that uh, can help you to overhaul the content of your website. Um, let's see, a WordPress site for an NGO, a community website. Oh, like a social network. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, fascinating. Okay, that one's really complex. <laughs> that was more about other people writing content onto the platform, I suppose. Although I guess there are use cases. Anyway, that's that's a really fun idea. An online bookstore. Oh, an educational business for a client. Excellent, excellent. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, for me today, I'm gonna. I've built a lot of new websites lately, so I think I'm gonna like imagine that I'm building a website, and I think it's gonna be for like a pet sitting business. It's not gonna be real, but you're gonna kind of see my thought process as I go through the creation of this business website. So. With this in mind, I'm curious, like how confident you are that you could write like a high quality website or how confident your clients are. And, and this, this workshop today came out of talking to several people um, at a local WordCamp um, that I attend, or not just like not a WordCamp, but like a meetup. Um, and some of my friends who have websites and when I tell them, oh, I, I help people build websites, their first question when I've seen it is, is it bad? Oh my gosh, is my website bad? <laughs> and that's like, wow, what a question, right? Like, I don't, I realized that a lot of the people with whom I was talking lacked confidence in the content of their website, which is how this came from, like where this came about. So I'm curious where you fall, and this can be for you, or if you're taking over somebody else's website for a client, things like that. Like, how confident are you that like the content on your website, the writing, the pictures, all of that, the fonts, the colors, that it would be high quality. I'm just, I'm just curious. There are no wrong answers here. Um, I'd say that when I build websites for myself, I'm usually probably around a three. Um, and if I were to spend more time brainstorming like this, I, I feel like it would be higher. Um, but I definitely know that when I've asked other people, like for example, um, I did a website for a bird rescue um, several years ago, they had no idea what to write on the website. So how confident are you um, that you could write a high quality website now? Just show hands. Someone said there are four. Great. Okay. A two. All right. All right. 
somewhat confident. Yeah. All right. Great. I hope that we learned things today. And if you are super confident, I hope that you throw out some really wonderful suggestions because we are all learning together today. A three usually, two if it's a complex site. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's really good to hear. Two, but confident. All right. All right. Let's keep going. So we're going to use a thought organizer today. Um, and it's going to help us organize our thoughts. And the idea behind this organizer is to really start with the end in mind. Like, what do you actually want to create with this website? Not just a website, but the full, robust, what you plan to do with it. Um, it's kind of like the Alice in Wonderland thing, right? Where the Cheshire cat in a tree is like, well, which, which road do I take? She asks. And the cat asks, well, where do you want to go? And Alice replies, well, I don't know. And then Alice answered, well, then, it, or not, then Alice, it, I'm sorry, the cat answered, my brain's not working very well. I have not had my coffee yet. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter where you go. So it's really easy if you're just messing around to create a website. It doesn't have to be pretty, but like starting with the end in mind really, really helps. Um, now, someone in the, in the chat said, hey, the client supplies the content. I love that. Um, I've recently worked with a dentist website um, and the, the content is actually what they struggled with a lot. So today's thought organizer that I'm going to share with you um, can also be shared with clients so that if you're, you know, asking clients for, hey, what do you want on this page, that page, whatever else, if it's kind of like pulling teeth and they're not being very forthcoming, this may be helpful for them. So this thought organizer looks like this. I am going to be writing in it and with you today. Um, and if you are, if you have a Google Drive, you are welcome to, let me make sure that this is shareable. Yes, anyone with the link can view this. Um, you're going to want to make a copy. So you're going to head to file and what is it? Make a copy. So you can either make a copy to your own Google Drive. If you have something on your computer, you can download it here as any one of these, um, even just a plain TXT file. The formatting will get kind of weird. Um, but if you've got like Microsoft Word or um, things like that, like you can definitely uh, download it that way. Or if you are on a mobile, as I know, a mobile phone, as I know one person is, you are welcome to have a handy dandy napkin, piece of paper, um, and just reference this as you write by hand. So you've got three different ways um, to access this content. So I am going to do the same thing. I am going to make a copy because I like to always write uh, examples as we go. And I am going to do the same thing. Make a copy. My website brainstorm. That way I'll remember what it is. Workshop example. Here I go. I'm making that copy. And once it is yours, you are welcome to write on that or write on your piece of paper. Either one. <laughs> All right. Three seconds. There was something I was going to say here about this. So the first thing we're going to look at specifically. What presenter view? There we go. <laughs> I actually have notes this time. I'm not just winging it, <laughs> which actually apparently slows me down. That's fine. Um, so we want to start with the goal of your website. So a well-structured and concise message um, that conveys your business purpose and services that helps visitors understand like what it is that you offer quickly. Um, so this can be, what do you offer? What is your mission? What are your goals? Any one of those or all three of them can be answered in this first one. So I'm going to write with you. And I'm going to set a timer. I'm just going to set this one for, oh, let's do a minute and 30 seconds and see if that is enough time over here. I will let you know when we stop. And I'm going to write with you today. So first off, what is the goal of your website? Um, we're just going to write a quick sentence, maybe two. Say, hey, this is the goal of my website. So for me, I'm thinking about, let's see, what kind of website am I hoping to create? I am creating a <laughs> bird pet sitter. This is not a real one, just a fake one, just for today's example. Um, but I'm going to write. So I'm going to think about what that goal of the website is. I'm just going to answer these questions here. So I'm going to go ahead and start that timer. What is the end goal of your website? And go.
you are just entering, we are currently working on a graphic organizer. Here is a link to the instructions in order to access this in the chat box. Finish the sentence you are on. All right, was that enough time, too much time, or too little time, just so I've got a sense of, of how we're writing today? Let me know in the chat box. Oh, good, my coffee is finally cool enough to drink. <laughs> Jean, I love that candor. You're starting to ramble. That's totally fine. Good. <laughs> um, rambling is good. This is just about getting your ideas on paper. You're going to shape those a little bit later. Um, I find that editing a blank piece of paper is a lot harder than editing something that, that is right here. So eventually um, you'll want to write a well-structured and concise message. But for right now, we're just going to kind of like brain onto the page. <laughs> okay, welcome. We have another new person. If you are joining us today, I'm dropping a link in the chat. Um, and we're, we're working on this graphic organizer. That link will get you set up with everything that you need today. Okay, cool. So the next question that I have is on content. And I just want to reiterate that you are the source of incredible ideas. Um, so with this in mind, um, when you're like, okay, I'm going to write a home page, an about page, a product page, just like a services page, a blog page, um, the biggest thing to remember is, is always your audience first. So we're going to be writing today specifically about your customers like pain points, right? And it's, it might not be a customer, like you're not, you might not be selling something, but you, you are offering ideas. You do want, as you said, people to do something with your website up here. So we're going to take another two minutes and I want you to ask yourself, hey, what are your viewers and customers needs? What do they know that they need that you can offer? Um, and again, this doesn't have to be uh, for a business website. Um, like if you were teaching people to crochet, for example, they might be like looking for patterns that maybe they would buy off of you. Maybe you would get, uh, I don't know, ad generation, things like that. But also what don't your customers and or readers know that they need that you can provide so we're going to take two minutes this time because this is this, these are three questions here we're going to take two minutes and we're just going to write what are your viewers and what are the, what are their needs i'm going to answer these two questions here so i'm going to write with you and start If you haven't moved on to what don't your customers need, move on to that.
Oh, I am so glad I didn't share computer sound with you. That was very loud. Finish the sentence you are on. Oh, I feel like I should have given this example first. Um, so for this one, like I, I wrote one here and I kind of surprised myself here when I was thinking about like what customers didn't know that they needed with like their parrot sitting, like how cool would it be if you had a bird and you came back home from vacation and your bird could like do a trick, right? Like that's something that customers didn't know that they need that I might be able to offer, right? Does anyone, have, does anyone discover something that surprised them about something that they didn't realize customers either needed or didn't know that they needed? Just curious or readers. Just curious in the chat box. All right, then keep your secrets. <laughs> That's totally fine. Um, so this is basically how we we generate content, right? Where we think about what they need, what they don't need. Um, and this is where things I find start to get tricky, right? A lot of people know these first two steps pretty well, like, well, <laughs> I know what my goal is. I know what my content is. Um, but then these next few ones are a little bit more complex. So we're going to talk about calls to action. First off, what are calls to action? So I do want to We'll come back to this in just a second. Margaret said, what hit me was that I need to train clients on the need for website maintenance. Oh my gosh, what a great realization. They don't know that they need that. Ah. <laughs> I feel like that's a constant struggle. All right, so let's come back to this. What are calls to action? This was honestly a new topic to me when I <laughs> came back to start teaching WordPress, uh, which is not the greatest thing, but Jean hit the nail right on the head. They are, you're getting someone to do something on your website. And I realized as I started researching these, that like, these are everywhere, all over the internet, people and companies and social media and whatever else are using these all the time. It's, oh, click here to read more is an example of one, or it is, um, buy now or read my product or leave a review. You see these calls to action all the time and they do tend to be pretty effective. So what are some of the calls to action that you've seen around? I'm just curious. Have you seen anything recently? One thing that I think of is just the read more um, call to action is one of them. Jean says, oh, sign up for a newsletter. Yes, collecting people's um, collecting people's personal information. That sounds awful <laughs> to me anyway. Um, but like getting their email, things like that are, um, are ways that you can build an audience and build a mailing list um, and reach out to them through marketing. Like if you are starting a business, buy now. Yes, oh my gosh, if you want this, buy now for a limited time. <laughs> it's those commercial things. Um, and they're not all quite that in your face, right? Like when you think about like, I don't know, one of those really late night car commercials, if you're in the States, they're just like, buy now, you've got to do this thing. Come down, come down to the car dealership, like all the time, like that you can do that. And they don't have to be quite as, um, quite as out there. So there are several other ones that we can do. Um, I'm just going to write some of these down in the chat. I meant to make a slide for this, but I think that that didn't uh, happen. By the way, we just have somebody new jumping in. So Samantha, um, I just dropped a link in the chat, Samantha, so that you can get the graphic organizer that we're doing. So there's a lot of things like, so you'll oftentimes see buttons that say things like buy now, learn more, read more. That's a really great call to action. Um, there are other things that are things like, hey, fill out this form, right? Like specifically for contact forms. Um, so you can do that or people could fill in the forms with some details and receive a free download, access to content. Um, there's also something known as product um, or service discovery. Um, so it's a preview of a product um, that includes a button or link to a detailed page. And those links read things like discover more or explore or similar props. And again, shop now is another one. Shop now, buy now is another great one. Um, 
I don't see anybody who's using anything with events. Um, let's see. Is anyone like there's other things like download now, charities, nonprofits, things like that. So one thing that you want to really consider as you're writing is what do you want people to do with your website? So when you think about when people come to your homepage or when they come to your about page or service page, and what I'm doing is I'm just listing out different things. Um, we want to think about what we actually want people to do on each of these pages, right? So I've listed out the, like the four general pages that are gonna be on my website. So on my home page, what I'm thinking about what I want them to do is I want them to, I'm thinking for like my calls to action here, I think I want them to learn more about me. So I want some sort of link, right? So learn more about why Sarah is right for you, for your bird, there we go. Um, I want them to learn more about me. I want to maybe put some sneak peeks of my services. So I would definitely want buttons to my services page as well. And I might think about what this looks like as I go. So for each of the pages, I would start by listing out the pages that you plan to have on this website or that already exist and think about what you want people to do on each of these pages, right? So like on my contact page, obviously I want someone probably to like give me a phone call. Um, that's the, the fastest way to, I don't know, secure <laughs> a bird sitting appointment probably. Um, or I could have them fill out a contact form. So list out in the next two minutes, list out all the pages on your website and think about what you want people to actually do. Because we don't just want them passively reading, we want something to inspire them to do something with our content. Um, and it can be as simple as, you know, leave a comment on my blog, share this on social media, anything like that. So two minutes, list out your pages and jot down some calls to action. What do you want them to do on each page? And go. All right, that is time. Finish the sentence you are on.
man, something just kind of tickled my brain here. I'm starting to think about other things up here, um, like in my website's content that I hadn't thought about before. So like, for example, I realized that someone doesn't know that they need someone who like really knows birds, right? So for example, in my local community, there are a lot of people who pet sit um, and <laughs> they, uh, they'll, they'll say things like, oh, I'm a vet tech, um, but they're not an avian vet tech. And I would probably rather have somebody who's been a, like a lifelong bird owner watch my birds than a standard vet tech because they just most standard veterinarians don't work with birds. So like, I'm fighting the urge to go back and add things. But if you're starting to realize, oh, hey, there's more that I could put up here, that's totally fine too. Did anyone have like an interesting call to action? Did something kind of erupt in your brain that you're like, oh, this is a really good idea. I should have them do X thing. Because one thing that I thought about with services is, hey, I could definitely do like a form, right? Like what's one question that I have about like my services or tell me about your parent? What do they like or dislike? This is a way for me to discover, you know, potential clients, what they like, what they dislike, if their birds have special needs, like things like that, um, that, that just never would have popped into my head and that I have never seen um, on a website nearby. <laughs> and that's, that's part, of, part of why I'm doing this is just because there, locally there are a lot of websites around that I've been looking because I've been looking for a parrot setter. Um, and they're just, they're missing these things. And man, I haven't called any of them, but if they'd had this, I want to call them. <laughs> Did anyone have one that they want to share a call to action that might be, might be useful? Or just interesting. Okay, so wording. Jean says that they that she thought of volunteering for an event, not just register to participate. Word choice there really matters. If you're looking at some of these and you realize that there, you could you could adjust your wording so that it's more inspirational, more altruistic, will resonate more with your audience. That's a great one. I love it. Any others? We'll keep going. But if you think of one or if you've become emboldened, by all means, drop it in the chat box. Okay. And I need to make these appear faster, apparently, because if I had just had that on the screen, that would have been a little bit clearer for myself even. Ah, coffee. <laughs> all right. The next one is going to be about building your credibility. So I, I want to ask you in the chat, um, what makes you trust a website and what makes you distrust a website? Because like, that's a really important distinction to have in the back of your mind as you're generating content. So for me, a lack of an SSL certificate, <laughs> you want to take my payment details without one? Mm, I don't know about, about that. But what builds credibility for you or loses it? Okay. Margaret says that the site loses points if the buttons disappear off the screen when I enlarge the text a little bit. Okay, so that responsiveness um, is really important. Experience is absolutely something um, that works. So like, for example, I have been, um, I, I've had birds for what, like 10 years now of my life? That's, that's quite a lot of experience. Um, so we're going to start with the next bit over here in building our credibility. Um, we really want to figure out, hey, what is your expertise or your client's expertise? What are your credentials? What sets you apart from your competition? Um, do you have any industry memberships? Do you have accreditations, awards, things like that? Gosh, I wish I had some of those for my pet setting business, but I don't. Um, and then do you have customer testimonials or any existing reviews that you could utilize here? So let's take two minutes. Just think, what is your expertise? Put it here because we're going to want to weave it into our website later. Two minutes, go.
Finish the sentence you are on. So knowing other people who have used the service, yes, testimonials absolutely can um, can build you up here for sure. <laughs> Uh, just the other day, one of my friends uh, helped her build her first website. She was asking me for a testimonial for her website the other day. It was really, it was nice. And it, it did help. She actually uh, got some some calls from that. So, okay. So we're speeding right along since we've got such a small group here today. Um, so the next step in our brainstorm is doing some research. So we're going to start looking at some similar websites and it's a good idea to look at like three other ones, right? So something that is similar to yours. So you may already have some of these in mind and if so, you can you know write down the links to them there. Um, and you're gonna wanna look at like colors, fonts and other noticing. So I'm gonna pick something that doesn't live near me um, to, to, to demonstrate this just because <laughs> I want to be fair to the people around whom I live, especially since this is just kind of a fake one. So I'm just going to start Googling something. Um, Denver parrot or Denver pet sitters, because it's not just parrots. It's like pets. It's, it's hard to find specifically. And you'll start to see like the big companies, right? Like rover.com trusted house sitters, but let's see what we can find just around. And so we're going to find this and we're going to um, put a link here and we're just going to see what we notice, right? So you might notice something about the colors initially. Um, you might notice something about the fonts. You might notice, oh, hey, there are their, um, accreditation, accreditation things. Um, and you're going to want to look at some of these, these different things. Um, so I'm going to pull up a couple of these just as an example of Denver pet sitters again. I'm just going to compare these because I want to see like what are other people doing that's working or that I'd like to do differently. So we've got this next one, Denver Metro Pet Sitters. And the other reason to pick, especially like these top three is because these are the, I mean, these are the ones that when you will put in your search term, this is what Google and other search engines have said, hey, this is the best of the best. Um, they're not advertisements, but they are, they have really good quality content, which is why Google has listed them um, as number one below, like, you know, the sponsored care.coms and things like that. So I'm going to pause here and we're just, we're just going to notice what, like, like similar colors, similar fonts, um, and then just anything else that you notice, you know, what is it that they're doing well that you're not going to copy, but that maybe you could emulate. Um, and what are some things that you might do differently about them? Um, and then someone asks, hey, if I'm redesigning a website, can I look at the current site and compare and contrast that to two others? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, what we're doing here is we're looking for exemplars, like the best of the very best, which as told to us by our Google search. Um, because that does give us inspiration. And again, we don't want to copy, but we do want to find inspiration. What are they doing well that I could also do well in a, a similar um, or yeah, in a similar way. So I'm going to give you a little bit more time for this one. Um, let's do four minutes. Just jot down some things that you notice and go.
if you haven't moved on to a second website, now is the time. You haven't switched to a third. Now is the time. I've extended the time because this takes a little bit, but let's move on. Specific. Finish the sentence that you are on.
So as I was doing this, I realized that a lot of these websites had some things in common. I think I might for future ones of these add a section down here. Um, things that these websites had in common. If you want to add this to pan, you don't have to, but I mean, I, I just noticed that like on almost every single pet sitting website I saw, there was a blue color, like blue emphasis, which I thought was kind of an interesting choice, right? Like it just, I wonder why that is. I wonder what associations come with that. <laughs> um, they definitely had a lot of white backgrounds, things like that. So basically going through and you can find things that you like on these websites um, that you can emulate, write them down, but also look at the things that they have in common because what they have in common, um, you may want to consider using on their own website. So if your website were a book, what genre would it be? Like what, if you were to picture a library, a bookstore, and your website were a book, like what shelf would it go on? You would definitely see certain things. So taking the time to sit and think, okay, wh what does this need to look like, right? Because like, if I'm writing like, I don't know, um, a technical manual about how to use WordPress, right? You don't want like Fabio on the cover, <laughs> like embracing a woman, right? Like that is not a feature um, that would go on the cover of that book. So these noticings are really, really powerful and impactful. So yeah, did anyone notice anything interesting as you were looking at some of your similar things, things that you liked, things that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even think to do that. One of my ahas was that they had a login on one of these websites <laughs> for, for like your pet sitters like that kind of boosted the credibility like oh there's a login I can just maybe schedule something online right like that would be oh that would be the dream anyone else see anything like that something that just kind of caught their eye that they inspired something in them It says that they noticed a soft call to action button. Grizzly Peak Century, register now. Hmm, they might be the same event. So it might be interesting if you, if you're, for example, if you're making a website about events, um, I'm thinking back to like your volunteer stuff, Gene, too, that you were talking about. Can you put different links to the same event? Something that might resonate with one audience versus another. It's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, now our next one is gonna be to do some keyword research here. So to, to start with this, so keyword research is, um, it's loosely related. And again, you could spend hours and hours and hours looking at other people's websites. Um, we, we're sticking to three because I don't wanna paralyze you with that. Um, but when you think about your business, when you think about your like what you wanna do, I want you to write down what phrases do you think people will search for? So for here, there are no wrong answers at all. We are just going to list out, hey, if someone were looking for your website, what are they going to look for? So take two minutes, jot down anything you can think of that might go in here. And they can be as similar or as different as you would like. But we're, we're, just, we're just brainstorming here. We're going to refine it in a minute. Here we go. Two minutes.
All right, finish this one, Pootsie, you are on. Up a little bit into the chat for someone asking. I think they were asking how to how to get this. So let me know if that wasn't correct. So what I discovered as I did this is I didn't really know as many keywords as I thought I would. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to use your favorite search engine. So I'm going to use Google um, for mine. Um, and if, if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing, like if, uh, you, which you're welcome to use, um, you can see mine as well here. So if you would like to see my version and just kind of watch me write, that's fine too. Um, it's, it's so, and, and Ivan, it's empty for you because I'm hoping that you will write in it as well. Like this is supposed to be a data generation for you as well. So we're going to go to our favorite search engine. And we're going to actually start putting in some of these phrases. And we're going to pay attention to what the autofill is here. And you're going to notice like what comes up first, second, or third. So I'm going to take my keyword list. I'm just going to stop. Start at the top, bird babysitter. Like is anybody even looking for that? Bird baby, aha, they are. So bird babysitter, bird babysitter near me. Blue bird babysitting. Oh, I guess that's the name of a company. That might be someone I could look up. Um, How to become a bird sitter. Oh, interesting. That might be a topic for a blog. <laughs> so you might start to notice things that that uh, generate other ideas. Um, But it looks like bird sitter near me is lower. Bird babysitter is another one. So there's definitely that bird babysitter, um, bird sitter near me. Um, and the things that are closest to the top as you start to do this or parrot, I, right now I'm looking for parrot in home. I'm not seeing anything pop up with this. Like a lot of people apparently aren't looking for parrot in home care, right? Like there's bird home care. But as I look at this, I'm looking for like parrot home cage, parrot home called what, crossword clue, uh, parrot and home good or bad. So looking at this, it doesn't look like anyone is actually looking for that. So with that in mind, um, I wouldn't use a phrase like parrot in home care. Um, let me just flip that. I guess I, I transpose it in home parrot care. Let me see if I can find that in home parrot grooming, in-home bird grooming, bird nest, bird care. Okay, so in-home bird care is one. But what I'm learning here is, hey, if I do offer grooming, because that's one of the things that I mentioned on my website is, hey, I can cut your bird's wings, <laughs> like clip them so they can't fly. Um, that might be something that I want to embed on my website. So as you're doing this, a lot of these things are, uh, that these are the keywords that you want to embed in your content. So anything that you see that's relevant, you want to add to this top list. So what, what was that one again? In-home parrot bird or in-home bird grooming. That's the number one. In-home bird grooming. Use this phrase in my website because that means that someone who maybe is looking for parrot grooming might find it based on that keyword. I know people are looking for it because it appears um, up here. So let's take two minutes and you're just going to start putting in your keywords and seeing A, if they're even there at all when you're looking, um, B, what other phrases um, appear there. Um, and anything that you're like, oh, I need to make sure that I include this keyword, those keywords are what search engines are going to look for to index your website. So you're definitely going to want to list these out here and you're going to use them later as a reference. So I am going to do that as well with you. Starting the timer and go. Um, I actually use the search engine, not my search bar. Just let it auto complete. I'm not typing out the entire thing, you'll notice. Reporting out. Disney World, okay. So there's market near me. I 
I can see where I'd be very successful. Looks like Los Angeles is first, the UK is next. And Kent and London. Airporting Florida. Okay, Florida Keys. Hmm. Okay, so maybe not that. I go ahead and delete ones, or maybe like highlight them in red to remind myself not to use them. Yeah, that's not one that's coming up with anything. One last one. So it looks like pet sitter, parrot pet care, bird pet sitter. So it looks like bird pet sitter is looked up way more often. Okay, today I learned. Bird pet sitter, me. me. Okay. So one thing that I learned is that the things that I thought people were searching for, uh, people are not. <laughs> Did y'all learn anything interesting about what you were searching? Not sure if I just look up weird things or what, but <laughs> it, it's hard to think kind of how my audience would think if I were to actually create this website. So now let's just go ahead and move on. So I, this whole thing was uh, slotted to take um, an hour, hour and a half if we were like really, really chatty. Um, but Jean says that they had a term come up that you hadn't already thought of. Yes, that is exactly the point. <laughs> you definitely want to spend more time doing it than just like four minutes um, for like for your actual website. But um, the, the idea is to come up with those terms um, that you hadn't thought of. So as you look at this now, um, we're, I think we're going to wrap up a little bit early today. Um, we've got all of these things now um, that you can continue to work on, continue to do, continue to generate. But what is it that you want to do with all of these? Your next steps with this would be to probably write out your different pages, right? So all the different pages you want to have for me. Well, I'm not going to do it right now, but you would list all the different pages you want to have. Um, and you're going to go back through and look at what the things that you did. And you want to have a little bit of all of this on every single page. Um, because I, I, one of the things that I've realized is that I, I tend to have a lot of pages on websites that I build that people don't actually do anything with. They just kind of read like a book. But that, that's very passive. If there is a goal that I have in mind, if I want people to do things and engage with my content and reach out and, and become active members of my website, or at least active readers, um, I need to make sure that I have the goal in mind for every single page, right? I need to make sure that on every page, um, within reason, of course, like you don't want every single page to have like all of this content, but pick and choose, right? On every page, on my home page, how do I tease what my viewers' needs are? How do I tease what they don't know that they don't know? Um, I know I want that on my home page. Obviously, a lot of this will go on your about page and on your, um, on like a services page, um, but you want to weave these things throughout so that every single page brings value. Um, calls to action. This is an important one. You want to weave those onto the different pages. Every page should also have some type of credibility throughout it. Um, and then this just ensures that you are, you know, putting your website uh, on the right bookshelf. <laughs> um, 
And the last thing, the last little bit that's really important is, hey, what, whatever phrases that a search engine is suggesting, I highly recommend doing this a lot more. These are the phrases that you want to embed throughout your entire website. Um, because those are the phrases that people are looking for. These are the phrases that Google is looking for as well. And the more of these that you have on there thoughtfully, you don't just want to like, you know, put them, like pack them in with, the, with no sense. Um, that is how search engines and people will find your website. So let's, uh, let's finish up today. Um, I was going to ask a question like, you know, how, how confident are you now? But I think the real question that I'm curious about is um, what was the most valuable part of today? And what's something that you would have liked to have seen different? So I'll write this in here. What is the most valuable thing you learned today? What is something to see done differently in the future? Answer one or both of those questions, and then I will thank you for your time. And I will, if you want, see you later, and we'll put some of this information on an actual website. All group today. So one person appreciated comparing sites and picking out what you liked and did not like about them. <laughs> what you would do different or better, yeah. I always like the phrase differently. Because I think what resonates with one person resonates differently with somebody else. <laughs> but I like that. Okay. Anything else? I think next time I'll start with that. The Google key search is explained. Um, I think you're saying that was the most valuable thing that you learned today. Or if you'd like me to go over that a little bit more in depth, that would be good to know as well. <laughs> All right. Well then, thank you all very much for your time today. I hope that I see some of you a little later where we actually um, build up a, a website of our own and you can use this information to do that. Um, maybe something I could do differently next time is to have people find three sites before the workshop starts. That's a great idea. Okay, I'm gonna do that next time. Great suggestion. All right, y'all. We'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. It's been good to see you.